Sung Sham Fun Cheng has rejected Nigeria's offer of $5 million for the release of new aircraft on the country's presidential fleet. The aircraft was impounded by authorities in France at the BS of the Chinese company after it secured a court victory for breach of contract against the subnational government in Nigeria, in this case, Ogun State. When President Bola Chinobu travels to Beijing for the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation shortly, and I think that uh, on September 4 to 6, FOCAC is September 4 to 6, and to prop up the Naira as part of the agenda. This publicized feud with Songshan will likely be a major feature of the interactions. The firm has described its ordeal with Nigeria as a foreign investor's worst nightmare in the Middle East. I'm now being joined by Jido for Adibi. Professor of Political Science at Nasarawa State University, Kefi, and founder of Adonis and Abe Publishers uh, in Abuja, Nigeria. Good to see you, Professor Jidofo Adibe. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abati, and welcome back from your holidays. <laughs> well, thank you. It's good to be back. Uh, Very good photographs. Mm. Yes, before yeah. we talk, uh, you know, about international issues, let's start with well, it's also international, of course, about the jet, the new jet that the president uh, acquired. Um, people are complaining. They say they want more details. How much did it cost? What happened to the old aircraft in the uh, presidential uh, jet? Just questions about transparency and accountability. And then the seizure of Nigerian property, sovereign assets by uh, uh, a Chinese company in Liverpool, in uh, France and also now in Canada because the uh, Supreme Court in uh, Quebec you know, has also ruled that Nigerian assets, a Bombardier aircraft you know, belonging to the Nigerian government connected to the OP, OPL uh, uh, 247 uh, okay. issue can be attached also. Now, what we, they say that the court, the arbitral court awarded to the uh, Chinese company is $70 million. It looks like they are in every jurisdiction. They want to attach every asset belonging to uh, Nigeria. What lessons can we learn from that? And then the issue about transparency and accountability in the uh, procurement of an aircraft for the president. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Bati. Let me start with the issue of transparency. I think our Nigerians are right to demand details of the purchase. I read somewhere that it was purchased for $100 million and that uh, a similar one was bought somewhere for $15 million. And uh, some of the defenders of the decision to buy uh, the presidential aircraft complained that uh, the presidential aircraft is uh, 19 years old and was bought under Obasanjo. And then I also read something that the American, uh, you know, the, the one that carries the American president, Air Force One, I think, is 34 years old. So it's the, the government really needs to come clean. It's, did he purchase it with $100 million, using another $50 million to fit it? We need to know, did it pass through budgetary processes and the rest? But this also adds to lack of the opacity in much of the you know, transactions of the government. And uh, if you talk about the Chinese, don't forget, it's, the lesson is very clear. In the year 2021, the Chinese government, the, you know, for a loan of $207 million, seized Entebbe, by Ugandan government, seized Entebbe airport and uh, confiscated a number of assets because that money was owned to the Chinese uh, import, ex import export bank, Exim Bank. So it is a lesson, especially for the government that was been binging on Chinese loan. In fact, uh, figures from the debt management office shows that as at December 2023, we are owing the Chinese government $5.16 billion. So you can imagine what will happen if we default. This is a signal of something to, you know, to caution us against uh, binging on debts. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have to see how it works out. It also tells you that... Uh, uh, there's a little uh, trust of our own judicial system. I read the defense by uh, Ibikula Morrison that uh, the, the company in question lost all the cases in, in Nigeria. If they went ahead and then we were able to win at the arbitration panel, headed by the former president of UK Supreme Court, it also tells you something about uh, the state of our judicial system, whether 
international actors are not showing that they don't have confidence in our system and they took it elsewhere as you rightly mentioned they got in france they got in quebec and even in liverpool some of uh, you know uh, assets belonging to the nigerian government were also confiscated and we don't know what happens next um, we just have to wait but that should really be a warning signal uh, to the government and to the subnationals that uh, go on debt binging you see, you see at the subnational level, the way governors behave like emperors, you know, they can just come in one night, if they don't like your face, they pull down your, your house. Uh, contracts that were negotiated and signed by their predecessors, they forget the fact that the government is a continuum. They just almost arbitrarily will just uh, cancel the contract. Uh, Ibikula Mosul was arguing that, uh, you know, had his own reason that uh, it, it was a conflict between two Chinese companies and all that and all that. I, I'm not very sure if he took all his case, all his arguments to the arbitration panel that was, uh, you know, headed by the president or a former president of the UK Supreme Court. Yeah, in specific terms, what are the lessons we can learn from this? Because some people have been saying, look, this was a commercial transaction. Uh, sovereign assets cannot be attached. But you know, under public international law, you know, uh, it's, it's a country to country, yeah. even when subnationals are involved, you know, because the country gives sovereign guarantees. And then, of course, there's something about the sanctity of contract. There's also about uh, agreements being respected. Pacta Sunta Sabanda. But uh, many Nigerians are saying, oh, this is our national asset. Yeah, yeah, it's the people of Ogun State. In fact, somebody sent me a text message that uh, being from Ogun State, I should stay away from China because I could be seized as a collateral. Oh, I want this thing <laughs> over <done>. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Dr. Badi, one of uh, my appearances here, I know we raised the question of whether international law is really law. There is uh, no known international law that has not been, quote-unquote, violated. So, and the, the, the court, the UK courts and Canadian court, I think it was the Canadian court that rejected the, the whole notion of sovereign immunity. And... Uh, the point now is there is enough embarrassment for the country and you cannot be expecting international investors to come around when this has really gone viral when this is like a, a caution to prospective investors and then for be debt binging people who kept on accumulating debts hoping that somehow at the end of it they will go again to beg for debt forgiveness that should be a cautionary note uh, the chinese they say they don't smile they may have small eyes, as people say, but they see opportunities and they know how to fight back. So we have to be very careful. Also, the idea of how to monitor more the, 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 the behavior of governors, because we tend to focus excessively on what happens at the centers, forgetting that the way some of the governors carry themselves, it's just worse than being an emperor. You know, you can imagine in virtually all states, in most of the states, if you have a discord, disagreement with your predecessor, some of the projects they start, sign, con contracts signed, you see that they just cancel them. And we saw that in several, not just with this case. We saw that with uh, Jokota, you know, you, you, we saw that with uh, Obasanjo's effort to, you know, concession uh, um, our oil refineries, which are, uh, are again cancelled and they refunded the money to Dangote. These are part of the things we should be looking at, sustainability and making sure that projects that were embarked on point by one's predecessors are properly protected by law the, 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 the contracts that establish those are uh, you know um, working arrangements and that because you are called your excellency at your state level you know you behave like emperor and uh, at your whim and caprice you just do whatever you like so that's a caution a note that we should be very careful in what we do and as you say dr abati when they run out of uh, assets to be seized you know, they can come to you. You were lucky when you were vacationing in the UK. They could come after you and uh, see a face of Nigeria and then take you away. Yeah, I, I'm back home now. <laughs> no Chinese is going to take me as collateral. <laughs> anyway, do you think that there's a chance for President Chinubu at the diplomatic level when he goes for the uh, forum on uh, Africa-China cooperation in September to address this issue uh, diplomatically? Although, you know. Losses, uh, no, arbitration I awards good, under New York Convention yeah, can be enforced. Yeah, I think uh, there's a, there are prospects. One, because we are highly debt indebted to China. We are owing the 5.16 billion 
dollars as at according to the data from the DMO uh, office of debt management office, debt management office. So we, it is in our own interest that we do not aggravate situations that will, you know, make it difficult for us to reschedule debts that are maturing. We also an important market for China. And I hope that uh, they will, the, the Chinese government will also realize that and uh, be able to, the company has made its point, uh, be able to see this as a, you know, uh, create room for further negotiations. It's also a lesson for the subnationals. I do not believe most of the things that Governor Ibikun Laomotion said, they, because the governors tend to be the same across the country, emperors, emperors that do not want to be challenged. Um, I think that we, the, the grounds are there. If you, people say, very rich people say that the reasons the banks, if you owe a lot, banks a lot of money, it's easy for you to negotiate. But if you owe a little and what the correct law you have can offset your debt, the, the, the banks will come after you immediately. So because we are highly indebted, if you follow that logic, because of we are highly indebted to them and they don't want to risk our reneging on those uh, debt obligations, that will make the Chinese government hopefully be more willing to negotiate and the fact that we're also an important